Every experiment in set three concludes with a questionnaire. So in this chapter, I'll discuss how to create them, how to retrieve the data that they generated, and then how to present and analyze the results. Questions can be run after at least one treatment has been run in C3 because you need the treatment to set the number of subjects. Now you may remember from a public goods game that a questionnaire consists of at least the address form and one question form. Now the address form, this is really the set three spelling here, is needed to write the payment file. But you can, uh, in the address form dialog, you can delete all of those components that you do not need or do not want to ask your subjects, and then these questions will not be asked. You can essentially delete all of these components, um, but you need to include the address form even if it not, is not shown to subjects. Now the question forms can then be used to elicit feedback from your experimental subjects, to ask them about social demographics, for example, and also to display results. So what I like to do is to have the payoff information on the final waiting screen of the treatment and also on the final screen of the waiting uh, of the questionnaire. However, as we did during testing of the public goods game, you can also leave the question empty and then you run this empty questionnaire, which will prepare the payment file and basically let set trip that you set close Setry cleanly because otherwise Setry will complain, but um, it doesn't take any time away, particularly during testing. Now, a typical question form, like the one titled Social Economics Background Data here, contains a rule which allows you to set the regions where the labels and questions are positioned, so basically the layout of your question screen. Then you can have one or more input items where subjects enter data that you ask them for. And finally, you need to have one button and one button only. And this button will just move the participants on to the next uh, screen, to the next question form in your questionnaire. There is no way for a subject to go back to a previous screen in the questionnaire. So they, they can only move through this uh, in one direction. And finally, on the last question form, you cannot have a button because basically once the final question form is being shown, the questionnaire is over and people's answers uh, have been recorded. So this corresponds in a way to a waiting screen in a regular treatment. You can use the session table to transfer information from one of the treatments that run prior to the questionnaire to the questionnaire itself and to then condition on this information in the questionnaire. And to do that, you would write the variables that you need or want to preserve into the session table in your treatment. And remember the typical or the, the predefined variables in the session table, of course, will always be there. And then in the question form definition, there is a, a program section and you can there access these variables in the session table. And that allows you to, for example, use a participate variable to control which subjects see which parts of the questionnaire. So imagine that in your experiment, you have subjects playing two roles. One, uh, half of them play the role of proposer and half of them play the role of responder. And you want the proposers to answer different questions in the questionnaire than you want the responders to answer then you would uh, write to the session table the, an, well, a variable that just says proposer one or zero or true or false. And then in the question form, you would um, specify a participate condition such that the participate variable is set equal to one for the proposers for those questions forms that you want the proposers to see and that it is set to zero for the responders whereas uh, the participate variable is set to one for the responders for those question forms that you want them to see and answer. Now let's have a look at an example of how you can display information from the treatment in the questionnaire. Imagine that you want to transfer a variable x from the subjects table to your questionnaire. Then what you would do is that in the treatment, you would create a program in the session table and if this program is in the background of your um, set tree treatment, 
then the scope environment we talked about this before in the chapter tables and scope there, this is this big table that you find also in the in the manual um, the scope environment is such that stepping upwards one step and we do that by this colon here from the session table actually does not take you to the globals table that but takes you to the corresponding record in the subjects table so if you're currently in the looking at the or in the in the third row so in the third subjects row in the session table and you use colon x then the value you get returned here is the value of x in the subjects table of subject three and this command would thus go through all the rows in the session table and copy the information from the subjects table to the session table into the variable x so the x variable from the subjects table is copied into an x variable in the session table and once you have that then in the questionnaire you can for example an item write something like this which uh, if you remember correctly these um, less than and greater than signs tell Cetri that there may, will be variables in, in what follows. And then we have some text which says displays x. And then we actually insert the value of x formatted as an integer. And this x is taken from the session table, but of course contains the same value as it did in the subjects table in the treatment that you ran prior to the questionnaire. One limitation of questionnaires is that you cannot check answers for correctness or for fulfilling certain criteria. So you cannot, for example, use a questionnaire to um, ask people control questions prior to the treatment because you want them to answer them correctly and you want the program to kind of force them to answer them correctly and you cannot do this with a questionnaire. The only thing you can do is you can limit what answers people can enter in the questionnaire through the limitations of the input items so the minimum and maximum you can specify and also the layout if you need to check the content of questions for correctness or for fulfilling certain criteria you need to use a normal set treatment instead of a questionnaire because there you can use buttons with checkers now why do you then use questionnaires well that is actually a good a good question uh, many experimenters I know nowadays do not use questionnaires anymore. They are kind of a legacy from previous Cetri versions where you did not have the option of entering text. So Cetri um, a few years ago did not have string variables. And there, of course, the questionnaire served an important, important purpose. Nowadays, many people actually ask their questions in normal treatments, which gives them much more control about um, what the screen looks like, what the what people can enter and so on can also allow people to go back and forth between different question screens for example but you still need to run a questionnaire at the end of the treatment or at the end of the experiment to write the payment file and properly conclude the experiment but of course again this can just be an empty questionnaire and you ask the extra questions in a normal treatment prior to the empty questionnaire Finally, I have some advice on how to present your questionnaire results, but I'll refer you to the chapter Managing Set Tree Output for that, because I pulled all the output topics and how to manage them and how to present output from Set Tree in this chapter, and so it will make sense to explain it again here. So please check this other chapter, Managing Set Tree Output, for this information.